Good morning, people from South Africa. I know that it might be another time in a different uh, part of the world, but here it is early morning. I want to welcome you back to my kitchen. I have decided, normally I burn incense in my kitchen if I see that there um, are some flies around, but I've got these little burners and I have decided that I'm going to use um, the burner today and see how it works. I've got a whole lot of citronella oil in the top and I was thinking I must maybe put the higher candle in. I'm supposed to put a tea candle in but I think the higher candle, let me just see, yes, might just work a little bit better and we will see how this is going to work for the flies today. I hope it will work fine. Um, it is very hot and humid at the moment here in South Africa and sometimes when I start cooking I do have a lot of flies. I think the compost tip doesn't help much for that either and we're also quite close to a horse farm. I never realized that my um, obsessive compulsive packing tendencies might be an inspiration for some of my viewers and it has come to my attention that apparently it is. I just want to show you my candle collection. Uh, all sorts of candles in that box. So that has inspired me to start using some of my stuff. I don't know for how long that is going to last. Hence my oil burner coming out of the cupboard today. Today's recipe is going to be a linguine alfredo, vegan style. So what you are going to need for this is going to be salt, black pepper, unsweetened regular soy milk. I'm going to go half half because I found this butternut macadamia nut milk in the shop yesterday. This is going to be the first time that I'm going to cook with this. Oli whip cream, that's the vegan version of cream. A good portion of vegan cheese. Flour normal flour for the roux, butter also for the roux, sunflower oil for frying, wheat linguine for the pasta, 500 grams of white button mushrooms, two onions, a good measure of garlic, I love garlic, also good for the immune system, and vegan bacon chopped. Our first port of call is to get the salt water boiling so that we can cook our pasta. I'm now going to chop up the mushrooms. Um, I'm just going to have a little bit of a conversation with you. I know that some people must wonder to themselves, can't this woman just get on with the recipe and follow the recipe out of the book? Why must she always fiddle and change the ingredients and the amounts that's in the recipe and I thought about it and I actually came up with the answer. <clears throat> My business uh, model changed. So Alicia started out first as a food made by order business and then during COVID I changed 
it to ready-made frozen meals. Hence why I always cook in big quantities. Uh, when I did make a dish, I would make uh, between 12 and 15 um, meals at a time and then that went into the freezer. But um, as the bigger companies started to make vegan food and there's a lot of variety nowadays available in the shops and in the supermarkets, um, the demand for my food has diminished uh, to the point where I have decided that it is not really worth my while to make vegan food anymore. My only problem is, and this is a little fun fact that very few people know, I do supply a restaurant, Graze on the River, in Port Alfred, of burger patties, which is Port Alfred is a small little town halfway between Port Elizabeth and East London. And um, so my burger patties is one of the most work intensive, labor intensive items <laughs> to make. Um, so I don't know, maybe I will still make burger patties for the restaurant. Maybe not, because at the moment I am actually pressed for time, I must say, and it is very labor intensive. But I do make a mean vegan burger patty, I must say. Um, now, why do I still tend to cook in big quantities, doubling the recipes? Because it has become very easy for me to still put the meals in the freezer and when MacD needs to eat, then he can go and choose what he wants out of the freezer for that day. That is why I always make food in big quantities. It is my natural tendency to do that, <laughs> I must admit, but um, mm, I will seldom cook only for one day. I will at least cook for two days so that there is for the next day or the day thereafter. Um, that's the one reason. I also think that the load shedding, the power cuts, um, hasn't made it very pleasant. You're always cooking against time, planning your day against time, rushing against time. So it is just peace of mind for me to know that there is food. I don't have to worry about food. And then the other question that might come up is, why don't I keep to a recipe? Why do I, why do I always change the ingredients out or fiddle with the recipe? And that is something that I never would have done in the past. Never ever. It would have drove me crazy if I didn't have the exact ingredients and the exact amount that a recipe asks for. <clears throat> Which is crazy because all recipes has been developed and created by somebody, a normal person like you and me. It is nice to know that that person has gone through the trial and error and wasting ingredients and the frustration to get to the end recipe. So it's nice to cook a recipe um, that works and you know that it's going to be uh, presentable and that you will be able to eat it once it's done, once you have gone through all the effort to make it and spend the money to buy the ingredients. Um, <clears throat> the citronella oil is working like a bomb. Just show you. Look at that. Isn't that wonderful? I was just not set my house on fire. I've got a tendency to do that. Setting my house on fire with a candle. 
is a story that I still need to tell because I almost burned my house down. That's why um, you will not see me burn candles um, in my house. Uh, I am paranoid as far as that's concerned with reason. It's not an unreasonable <laughs> paranoia, that one. <laughs> that was scary, but um, I will tell that story in, a, uh, in conversation with Sunit video at some other time. <clears throat> My challenge has become to modify normal recipes out of non-vegan cookbooks and change it into a vegan recipe so that people don't have to rush out and to go and spend that amount of money to go and buy a recipe book, a vegan recipe book. And I must say, I think that the recipe books that you get now, the recipes, the majority of the recipes might be more successful than the re recipes that you got in the recipe books that came out very, very early in the beginning of the vegan movement because I think people didn't quite know still what they were doing. Now there is many, many channels on YouTube, just vegan cooking channels. A lot of experimentation has been done already. And um, so I think the cookbooks that actually will come out now the recipes might be uh, more successful, better tested, um, because the knowledge is there. I've got two vegan cookbooks. The one, the one little book, I think there's only a smoothie that I'm going to make. <clears throat> then I will take that book to a, a, a book exchange shop. The, uh, the little bread that I made out of that cookbook, I think there's about five recipes in that cookbook that I will make and there is uh, I, I bought a few and then I stopped then I then I made the decision that I'm going to take recipes normal recipes out of other cookbooks and I am going to um, exchange the ingredients out I'm going to replace the ingredients some experimentation go into that some flops I had to throw about 48 muffins away because I tried to double or triple the recipe. And the egg replacer, you can't double or triple the egg replacer um, to the amount of eggs that is asked in a recipe like that. It made the muffins unedible. It was terrible. I had to throw 48 muffins in the bin. That's just an example of, uh, of what can happen. These are all my cookbooks, <clears throat> my recipe books. And these are the non-vegan recipe books. I get my vegan recipe books in my bedroom so that I can read through them um, just before bed. That was before my YouTube journey started. So there's a lot of... Um, Afrikaans recipe books there, but um, I can translate into English, so that's not the end of the world. So this um, linguine recipe I'm making today is a my own vegan version of it, and um, It's basically just changing the, the normal ham that they put in or bacon out for vegan bacon. The Parmesan cheese I replace with vegan cheese, not a Parmesan version. <clears throat> because the Parmesan version is made with nutritional yeast and nuts. And, um, <clears throat> and the milk and the cream, basically. And yeah, and that's all. And then you have a linguine alfredo. It's as easy as that. Don't have to go for all the fancy, very expensive ingredients to replace stuff. Uh, the next recipe I'm planning to make is a vegan health rusk recipe, which I've made 
quite a few times. I've got two rusk recipes which I have veganized, normal rusk recipes which I have veganized. Um, delicious. So that will be my next food blog that I will be making will be the, the health rusk recipe, which is a normal recipe that I have veganized. It is so hard for me to vlog being just by myself. Um, getting now, for instance, my face in while I'm talking to you and the food so that you don't forget that I am actually busy with a food vlog. And um, the other reason, I, my, my kitchen is not built or set up to do food vlogging. I do not have a high kitchen counter and a place where I can put the camera in front of me and I cannot stand and cook because of my illness. And um, that's why you will see me sit down and do all my chopping <sighs> because my muscles get tired. Often I drink some um, anti-inflammatories before I start cooking because otherwise I also get very tired in the shoulder muscles and in the neck or my hands start cramping. I uh, sit down and cook for that reason. There are so many factors actually factoring in on my the quality of my vlogs at the moment. Um, it is just difficult vlogging on your own and I can't for instance now zoom in and out or pan to my face when I talk and pan to the food that I'm preparing. <laughs> I also thought that it might be a little bit more interesting maybe if I cook while I talk instead of sitting um, in my lounge um, just in front of the camera and talk. But I do realize that a lot of people come for the recipe and the food. So I'm trying to <laughs> have my, my conversations food related or what Salicious is all about or how I see the future of Salicious. I do not really want to do this kind of style vlogging on Salicious. Um, Facebook also monetizes, but it must be a business page. Um, you must have X amount of followers and X amount of viewers within a specific time frame. But I feel on Salicious, my environment needs to be more sterile um, and I need to have all the little bowls the same and everything measured out um, beforehand. And my kitchen, like I said, is not designed really to have a nice professional um, cooking channel. And um, then the people your viewers and the people in the comments section will start hitting you um, because of that. And um, I'm not ready for that yet. So this is just me having fun in my kitchen and talking to my, my friends. Um, on my YouTube channel. <laughs> Now for the onions, two onions. My eyes off, I must probably go into water. And this is the way I cook. You know, it's there's no perfection here. Um, because I don't run my life like that. I don't know if I think I might do another onion. I took half of those onions away, so they turned out to be a little bit small, so I am going to add 
another onion, but this onion looks rotten. Oh, yes. So that will just be thrown away. Compost it. We were supposed to have very, very hot weather here for the whole week. And although the humidity levels are very high, um, it is a cloudy day with intermittent drizzling. How nice. Okay, the water is now boiling. So I'm going to do a packet and a half of linguine because I want two or three meals to be frozen for Magdi and we're obviously going to eat of it today. So this is going to go back into my pantry <laughs> and my pantry is not going to get empty but now I must find something to do as a little bit of linguine again then I must go and buy another packet of linguine and I must make another linguine recipe. <laughs> so that's the way that it goes but it is what it is. So what's the difference between an Alfredo and a carbonara sauce? is that the Alfredo is just a thick, creamy sauce and the carbonara is made with eggs. Although I have cruelty-free eggs, I have decided to rather do the Alfredo. Not that this channel is supposed to be a, a vegan channel. But I do support what the vegans stand for, 100%. But I have also learned that you achieve less if you're trying to ram down your opinion um, other people's throats. You actually only achieve the opposite. So I have changed my approach to we are free to make our choices in this world, in this life, regarding all things, religion as well. And um, it's not for me to try and change uh, other people's minds if they don't decide to do that on their own accord. You can make people aware of that that's what's going on, but if you do um, sense a good amount of opposition, right from the get-go then just relax and back off because you're not doing yourself veganism any favors by getting aggro about it i do have bigger knives but um i've got two of these finely serrated knives and they are my favorite knives to work with, so they are my go-to knives when I work with veggies and fruit. The linguine is not fully cooked yet, but I've taken it off the plate because it will cook further in the water until I was under cold water to stop the cooking process. <coughs> Cutting the vegan bacon up in smaller pieces.
And this is delicious um, vegan bacon made by me. <laughs> I also fiddle with the recipe continuously, so. <laughs> it always looks a little bit different. But if you work with gluten to get it to always look exactly the same, it's very difficult because it, it depends on the weather, it depends on the temperature of your hands, it depends on how long. Um, you work with the gluten, it depends on <laughs> how long it's in the oven, the amount of water in the, in the water bath that you are steaming it with. Ugh. It is really, um, it is really a, a painful, a painful art. <laughs> I must say. <laughs> Not the most pleasant, I'm afraid to admit but the truth <laughs> okay so what do you have thus far three onions chopped up 500 grams of chopped up white button mushrooms about three big toes of garlic chopped up i would say that's about 500 grams of grated vegan cheese and I would say that's about 750 grams of vegan bacon chopped up. Okay. I'm going to start by frying the onion first. I am using my black skittle pan because I am going to fry the faux bacon and if I don't want it to stick to the pan and become a mess, I need to use a black cast iron pan. So I just want to be close to the mommy. The onion is browning nicely, so I'm going to add the chopped up garlic now because I do not want the garlic to burn. Garlic has a tendency to burn. So just before the onion is completely ready, I am adding the garlic. And my heat is still on high heat. It is the highest, which is number six. Onion and garlic is now ready. I'm going to use the same pan a little bit of oil in and I'm going to divide the mushrooms in two batches for the fry so that I can get a nice brown mushroom. Here I'm going to layer my seasoning, so I'm going to put a little bit of salt and black pepper in the mushroom. And I'm back, I'm back with a mole. <laughs> Isn't there a song, something about what keeps on turning, turning, turning? 
think there's a song like that. I'm really bad with remembering words of songs. Really bad. I have to go and look that one up. One thing that I've all also learned is that I will swap out a flavored liquid for plain water added to a dish or maybe milk. Um, I'm going to throw the excess um, liquid now off the frying mushroom because I want the mushrooms to brown. But that is now going to be a, a very flavorful um, water which I am going to add back into the dish um, instead of that amount of milliliters of milk. Like I did in the aubergine dish, where I changed the vegetable stock out for the olive brine. I just find that it works, it works well for me. They are just starting to brown, and I don't want them to cook away completely, so I'm going to take them out now. Okay, now for the second batch, just do a little bit of oil again. I'm going to fry the second part of mushrooms. And again, I'm going to do a little bit of salt. Second batch of mushrooms is done. Now for the bacon. I'm going to make it rather crispy. Also going to make it in two batches because I don't want it to stick to the pan. I must put my heat lower. Am I crazy? Oh, it's not really nice. <laughs> Going to add a little bit more oil. And... Um, I've turned my heat down to three. Oh, look how nice it's already starting to brown. Really smelling quite nice in the kitchen at the moment. I have turned up the heat to number four because it is starting to fry a bit. I'm going to turn it up now now to number five, just before I take it off the plate. Okay, oil for the last bit of frying of this recipe. The second batch of the bacon. And my bacon is well flavored, so I do not have to flavor 
the vegan bacon again when it's in the pan. The second batch of vegan bacon bits is done. As you can see, it wants to stick, but it's not. It's not like everything becomes a mess. It's just not a little bit, a little bit left over in the pan. My muscles are a bit of a mess. Like David says that he's salivating. <laughs> I'm going to mix this. Okay, I am now going to use the same pot that I cooked the linguine in. I'm not going to dirty another pot. You should also know me by now. And I've got no idea why I do a recipe that requires a roux because I cannot do a, a, a proper roux. I always get lumps in my sauce. I've got a shortcut way that I do it. <laughs> But I'm going to try and do it the right way today, but I don't think it's going to be successful. I'm getting uncomfortably hot in front of the stove now. Uncomfortably hot. I'm melting the um, vegan butter. Okay. Now. I must add this flour and then it always looks to me as if it's going to clump and it actually does and it never comes right again. But here I go. I am now going to slowly add the plant-based milk. I have a very sensitive nose and a very sensitive palate, also very sensitive ears, although the ears has got nothing to do with the cooking. But when soya milk warms up, I don't like the smell. It bothers me. So I would normally use almond milk. But I do not have unsweetened almond milk in the house. I did not look properly to buy the unsweetened almond milk when I was in the shop yesterday. So I am going to use the soy milk. So be careful that if you do use plant-based milk, that you make sure that you, if you make a savory dish, that you do not use the sweetened version of it. So I'm going to use... 500 milliliters of this, 500 milliliters of the macadamia nut um, milk, and then I'm going to use the 250 mils cream. So that will give me a liter and 250 mils. Um, I'm going to use now 500 moles of the macadamia milk. I have added the rest of the macadamia milk. So there's one liter of macadamia milk in here. And it's got like a, a very 
beige color. It's not like a white color. It might affect the color of the dish, but it's fine. I've never used it before. It's the first time that I actually saw it in the shop yesterday. I am going to put a little bit of salt in. Don't come to the pot because it's um, lumps. <laughs> Uh, and a little bit of black pepper. And I'm going to wait for it to thicken before I put the, um, the vegan cream in. 250 ml. You can see that it's starting to thicken. So I am going to throw the cream in. Okay. I'm now going to add the cheese because I want to have it melt into the, the white sauce. This is turning into a very rich, very creamy sauce. Okay. I'm now going to add the onion, garlic, mushroom, and bacon mixture. And with that, I am going to add the mushroom liquid back, which I threw off when I fried the mushrooms. I'm going to mix it in. And there is my vegan Alfredo sauce. Or the linguine. And this is the end result. Okay. Okay, thank you a lot for this food that you've given us. This is a uh, <laughs> linguine. Linguine. Linguine offered. Offered. Oh. Is it not the same thing? No, it's, it's actually not, it's on the menu. Yeah. It's on the menu. Mm. <laughs> I will, thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's right. Which one was that? It was, uh, I think, but in, in Rain Street, in Central. No, 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 and I think that it has now passed the, the taste test. And on that high note, I'm going to say you must look after yourselves. Keep well. Until next time, hope to see you in the next video. Goodbye.